Hello YouTube, this is David with Boat Nut Films. Uh, I've driven the car quite a bit, uh, put some miles on it since the uh, last episode when I did the airbox. Um, Brillo padded these rims really good. They're supposed to be chrome, but they were so rusty I couldn't use much less and polished them. Uh, but they turned out a lot nicer than they were before. And uh, my center caps, I rotated them around and just torqued them down real tight and they're not making noise anymore but that's one of the small improvements that uh, I've made since uh, last episode the airbox we opened up on it really made a difference um, especially that it's a little bit cooler um, and I'm going to show you what we're going to get into we've had this problem that one opens that one's trying, but I've noticed this headlight as I go down the road will start falling, so I have made a little wedge. And this is how I've been driving it at night. You know, that ain't gonna work. So, I ordered uh, Amazon and parts made in the USA, which to me means a lot. The um, kits, the gears for the headlights, they're plastic. I didn't upgrade to the bronze. They were just so expensive. This is a budget car, but this one always comes, this one also comes with the three little uh, peg shims that go in. Those are usually what wears out on it quicker than the gear itself, but we're going to put those in. Um, another thing that I'm going to have to do with these uh, if you've watched previous videos, you know what I'm talking about, but you see how the motors are still turning? I don't think it's supposed to do that. We've got a linkage issue here, too. I may um, fabricate uh, a piece that uh, goes on there and gets that out. Um, not sure what I'm going to do, but once I get into the headlight, uh, I'll try some things that I'll know more. But uh, this video, we're going to replace the gears and shims in both sides and get the headlights where they'll function correctly. This should be everything we need here. Uh, you got your T30 Torx, which should fit all your Torx fittings, uh, your quarter inch. Uh, some of them are deep well, some of them you don't, but I just go ahead and use a deep well. And, uh, your 10 millimeter and ratchets and extensions and a screwdriver. These always come in handy. I assume I will need them at some point, uh, even to get the pin all the way out. And what I saw they were using was just a lightweight hammer. Those pin, that pin, uh, that roll pin shouldn't be in there very tight. And uh, we're probably going to use our small. On your plugs here, you just kind of pop that up get it started and they will come right unplugged on your 1989 C4 Roaster this is exactly what this one is there's gonna be two plugs so um, I'm gonna untangle this so we are unplugged there's no need to undo the battery uh, we're not turning the all right we've on got our uh, 10 millimeter deep well Again, make sure you're turning the right way. I haven't done one of these yet, so if I can do it, you can do it. And let's see. Um, the top one, I'm going to the top two. I'm just going to loosen them and leave them there. That way the whole of the doesn't come out on me and fall.
it is a 13. Again, be careful. Um, especially if your paint job is in good shape on these. Uh, you could actually pull these cards off before you do that. And there's my bracket. We definitely don't want to forget how that goes. So. Yeah, I found my bolt and some other odd things in here. You know, what the hell is that? That was loose in there. Yeah, I know what that is, but I'm just finding things down in there. Oh, the surprises. But on an 89, it's a little bit different than everything else that I've looked at. So you'll also need a 13 millimeter. And I, this bracket just came completely off. Um, and this was the... Uh, Retainer nut will come all the way out. It's got a square piece on it. So these three go together. And then these four are all the same. And then two. And that's all you got to take out to get the whole assembly out. If you have the covers that are in good shape and not damaged like mine, it's it's fairly easy just to take these off if you're worried about scratching them while you disassemble this. Um, the other side, just lay on a flat towel. Uh, while you're working on it and again our 89 was different than a lot of them um, it had the two wire plug which I assume is for the up and down and the three wire plug I assume is uh, high beams uh, easy easy so far but we'll see okay first thing we're gonna try is just to go ahead and get the hard part out of the way uh, got the right size punch there's probably a middle sized punch that would work better. And we're going to knock this pin through. We moved it quite a bit just then. And there it is. It's just that easy. Those pins aren't in there uh, that tight. And I love these little magnetic tools. Just reach in, grab your pin. And uh, another thing I think highly of that I recommend for anyone who does auto mechanics are these little magnetic bowls. So, you know, we're not going to lose anything. We're going to keep track of everything here. One thing I recommend strongly, uh, you'll have to, if you're going to work on your own Corvettes, are uh, Torx tools. Most of the stuff... Um, in any arrangement put together on these cars they use the Torx uh, so I've actually got uh, Torx impact sockets I've got uh, just your regular Torx sockets and I think for our next step just the uh, Allen key style Torx for our T30 will work fine and what they want us to do is remove these two bolts that hold the assembly in place. So we're going to do that. And the uh, Torx keys I have found are they come in really handy because they're easy to manipulate in tight spots and that's what we have here on the next Torx bolt. Uh, I don't know if ours will do it. See, we've got an access right in here. I don't know if you can see that, but his again is a little different than mine. I was hoping for a straight shot down in there. Hmm. And one of the ways that I've magnetized my tools is I'll lay them in the pan and just leave them in there and turn them a little bit or you can come on the bottom side where the magnet's even stronger and you can actually magnetize your tools but now we're going to come in and grab these on the inside mm. Yeah, 
be very careful not to strip your torques out. I think in a hardware store, uh, Torx bolts would be hard to replace. And one of the reasons I'm not using a socket is because these are tight areas and um, this is where these type of um, Torx tools come in handy. Just gotta make sure you get them lined up right. Well, a little torque socket may have worked better on the switch hover because we can at least get the top one out a lot quicker. Mm, they're seated in plastic and they're not loosening up to the point where I can get it with my fingers. The bottom one this probably won't even fit in though. And me, I'm not as concerned with my plastic covers because they are in such bad shape. But uh, you can lay a towel over that and make sure that you don't um, scratch your painted surfaces on cars that have, you know, the pristine paint job. That almost feels frustrated coming out. That is in there tight. No, it's just a plastic. It's getting loose. And I can bring the headlight up a little more, actually. Maybe that'll give me more clearance. I'm so stripped out, it's hard to say. Yeah. A little bit better. not exactly square so I'm just taking my time there making sure that the uh, tool is not going to strip the Torx head on this bolt. We're in good shape there. Alright, you got all that loose. And on your 89's, you've got one on this side too. So, you know, we're kind of improvising and flying blind, and you don't want to mix your screws up unless you know they're the same. See, that one's longer, so we'll know that that comes through the front side, just out of memory. And our motor will pop right off, but what you want to do, if you can see this bracket here, is make sure that it goes in exactly the same way that it came out you know and on the other headlight this bracket here is where I'm having a problem I don't think that I can remanufacture that as easily as I thought um, so we're gonna have to figure something out on that other light may not get it done tonight but I am actually just gonna leave that on there kind of in position but you can see here we've got our uh, motor loose and at this point uh, we've got three bolts here and then we can uh, pull our gear out <clears throat> and I'm just gonna use an extension because it always seems easier for me that way
Yeah, ours is apparently just stuck on. It's three bolts. We're just gonna kind of—it's got a gasket here, so we're just gonna gently pry it up. And as you can see, my gasket's broken. We're not gonna worry about that. Um, we're gonna use uh, silicone gasket maker. I'm not going to replace these, but I will use silicone gasket maker. And then your gear should push out on the back side. And also make note of where your washers are. Some will have more than others from what I've seen. You've got one here that goes on the back. Well, now there's several shims here, actually. So you've got a washer and there's actually three thin washer shims that will go on the back there. We want to remember where those go. And on the front there was a uh, another shim. Look at the mess that just came out of that. Look at that. You can see that uh, my little dials are totally disintegrated. The gear is worn, but the source of the problem, and you can see them just disintegrated running around in there. What a mess. But we'll just leave this washer on the front for now. It's, it's, it's semi stuck on there anyway. Definitely, that's the problem. Um, a lot of people will take the motor off and clean this. Uh, this is actually a metal drive gear. Um, one good thing about having plastic gears is, and it's the same thing on a distributor, you have uh, a gear that will give before the more important gear gives. Um, on your distributor shaft, the drive gear on the shaft is usually made softer on purpose than the gear on your cam because it's much less expensive to replace a gear on uh, your distributor than it would be to pull the whole cam and have to replace a whole cam because the gear uh, failed. Um, they make a bronze gear that um, supersedes or is much better than this gear but there's a reason this gear is plastic. You know I don't have any qualms about using the bronze gear but I would rather have, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, depending on how expensive these motors are, um, the gear that is softer. And this car has, uh, at this point, like 167,000 miles on it. These have lasted that long, so um, I don't think the plastic gear is necessarily a bad idea. So basically what we're going to do here now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean up everything and sweep this crap off into a pan or something and organize my parts. Okay, I got a lot of my residual dust cleaned up, um, but we're going to clean a little more on these. And all the metal parts, I'm going to use a little bit of brake cleaner, but I'm just going to come in here and just kind of hit this with a wire brush and clean most of this crap off. Still up in the air a little bit on what type of grease to use. I'm almost really considering packing it out with uh, red grease and our shims coming off the back. Make sure you remember we had three uh, that went on there. I may have to look at the video and make sure though. But here, our gasket is gone. So I'm actually going to come in with a little RTV sealant and just get rid of the gasket and replace it. We're going to blow all this out real good. Same thing with the motor. The worm gear doesn't have a whole lot in it. Actually, 
looks pretty clean just by taking a little bit of air out of it. Whoop. <clears throat> We're going to break into our new parts. And honestly, um, I'm, I'm second thinking using uh, the uh, white lithium grease. I don't think it's going to hold up as well. I've got some black RTV that I'm going to reseal this cap with and just tack it back down. But I think I am. I'm going to use uh, just red bearing grease. Uh, it'll kind of hold everything together too. So. Hang on tight, let me get that. And we're going to pack this thing out. Put a fair amount on there. So it can roll itself in good. I'm saying be very careful and take pictures of what you're doing when you do it. Take and set our actuators in there. Boy, she does not act like she wants to go. It's odd. There we go. And we're going to have to tap it down. They're started. That's the way they go. That's what we're going to do. Alright, the trick is uh, once you get your little bushing started, take and twist it uh, kind of and they will just pop right in. So we're going to take our three shims that came off the side, put them back on. We've already got uh, this packed out and we're just going to set our shaft back in. We are dropped in. We are lubed enough. We're going to take our other shims wherever they went. Keep track of your parts. Very important day. I know there was some on the side. Yep, they were sitting underneath the motor. Put them back on. And then we're going to take a little bit of RTV sealant. We're going to clean the grease off the outside edges. If you don't have a gasket, you know, it's not like it's circulating oil through these parts. Uh, we actually need to set this on something to keep that shaft. So we're going to take a very little bit of a uh, Well, we're dried up. Yeah, we had to do a little surgery. But there we go. We're going to take and just run some uh, RTV. It's 
just on the outside of this thing here. I'll come back and get the screw holes in a minute. Make sure she's sealed in good. Probably do it without the gasket and never have a problem. But I do not have time to order gaskets. And that will work fine. Now we will place our piece back exactly where it goes. It's almost positive is this way. We'll take our little screws, get them started back in. The trick to seating the little plastic dials inside the gear and getting it to all go on is just getting them started and then turning the gear itself and they will they will they will pop right in. go now we're getting to assembly is the reverse of install but your gears are in there and uh, our shims are right we're set right now it's just a matter of putting it all back together Which could get tricky. Okay, obviously I put this bracket on backwards, so that's not that's going to be an issue. Um, on this coming through it the second time, and uh, this is how we all learn. You can just loosen that one there and pull forward enough where you've got access to this one. So I've got to take the motor back off actually. what you're doing son and don't be drinking too much while you do it oh hell it's all fun man I love working and learning on uh, these Corvettes shaft pay attention to what you're doing seriously got it back together this one's solid not having to help it at all and we'll do this one I probably should have started the video on this one having done this one first and I would have looked a lot more intelligent but you know I'm telling you it's the first time I've done this This sucker is nice. It's tight. 
All right, let's move on to number two. Okay, a uh, good idea is to take pictures, of course, with your cell phone. This uh, hex down in there will just loosen. We won't get it all the way out. This one on the back will have to loosen all the way. Uh, just so we can get it up high enough to get that bolt out. You can use your dial to a certain degree. Alright, we've torn a little deeper into this one. And uh, this is my problem why my passenger side headlight won't stay flush. This bushing is worn. Whew, I don't even know where to get one of those, man. Um, this one on this end needs to be replaced as well. Conundrum. I'm wondering. I don't know if anyone has any ideas about that. Send me a comment. Don't know what to do about that. Okay, so what I've done on this one is I've had to get a little more detailed about it. Um, these bushings are bad. Uh, even even here um, that's I think where it was hit lightly in the right front corner but we're pretty lucky here I think I think these are the parts that we need here um, the car guy we can get these bushings off of eBay and that will include the, everything we need the A B C parts um, and I think that will help us to get our headlight flushed out. Also, yeah, this is the kit here. All I need are the four bushings there, but I will go ahead and use the seal, and I'll have some extra parts. And the OEM gear grease I'll use on this side. So the right side, we can use all those parts. Um, and then we can save the three little dowels and the roll pin are only things that I'll I won't use right away but maybe at some point I don't plan on selling the car but that's the kit okay we are truly at a stopping point uh, there's some things I have realized you can uh, barely see that there but my bottom bracket bezel is made out of pot metal uh, right there you see it's broken completely. I noticed that when I got it out of the car. When it's all bolted together, um, it kind of stays together. But this having been loosened and wobbling is most likely what wore my bushings out. You see how loose that is? We're going to fix all that. Um, just trying to keep in mind how all this goes back together. Uh, also, these bushings here, one here and one on the inside, we're going to replace. Uh, this should slide out once I get this bolt backed all the way out. But, uh, waiting on parts now and trying to just keep everything together until that point. See, the uh, driver's side is done. And I'll show you what it's supposed to do when they're corrected. See, that comes out with power and authority it doesn't keep making any noise you know that was $24 for the gear that's what I've got into that one and she puts right back without running the motor any further uh, and I've got the gear assembly for this one they were $24 I think is what I've got in that one but this one I had to spend $24 on the bushing kit it will come with a seal for this and then another these were expensive in most cases well over $100 but I found one on eBay for $24 and I ordered it uh, for the right side passenger side but we'll have to take this all the way down and uh, the wire runs in here we'll have to rewire it but uh, waiting on parts but uh, we'll get there soon enough